Hello everyone, this is Adnan with Canips uh, Video Trainings. Now, <coughs> in this training I'm going to go over, this is uh, Exchange Server 2010 training and part 5 of this video series. In this video, <coughs> in previous videos where we had already installed Exchange, we explored the EMC, we already created some accounts, we did the basic mail flow, also, we in the last video we created databases. We understood what databases are. Uh, I hope you were able to complete the assignment given at the end of the last video uh, for creating those databases. And uh, and we did test it out one account that was that was created in the new database. Now this video in this video we're gonna go over CAS role. CAS is uh, uh, is your client access role client access server client access server now this server is the main server this role is the main server basically this is for uh, client connection so all your clients all your exchange clients when they log into exchange uh, before logging into their mailbox they are connected to CAS so CAS is a very very important role let's uh, so in this we're gonna understand we're gonna see the CAS configuration under organization we're gonna go through CAS configuration on the server and there will be testing out and verifying the CAS role so <coughs> in our environment we have right under organization we have CAS we have CAS under under server settings as well CAS under organization, basically what is CAS? CAS is the main uh, connection uh, point for all of the, for all of uh, the main connection point for all the clients. Uh, in other words, in other words, let's see if I can, sh we can see the diagram, we can say exchange 2010, uh, mailbox, CAS, hub let's check some <coughs> images so here um, let's find the best the best diagram um, cas hub no let's see we have cas cas so client load balancer Okay, CAS is here, CAS, Hub, Domain, Mailbox, Mailbox, Databases is here. What I want to see is a very basic diagram of CAS. So here you have upgrading 2007. So user, uh, this is Edge. And, 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 let's quickly see. Oh yes, here. So this is CAS, this is CAS server. All the client connects to CAS, from CAS they are connected to mailbox. So the way it works is, a user connected from Outlook or a smartphone, ActiveSync, or from any other uh, email client, they first connect to CAS. From CAS, they help in authentication because the user is logged into the Outlook. CAS, a CAS will take the username and password get to uh, the domain controller gets the error authenticated if authenticated it will provide it will it will then connect the user to the mailbox if it is not authenticated the connection will be rejected so basically what we see here is what we see here I have a outlook here so as soon as I open this outlook let's say I open this outlook here so the very first time it is logging me in and it is connected and here it's saying trying to connect here as soon as it is connected it is connected to exchange source so basically what happened was as soon as I started the outlook from outlook it connects here it gets authentication and connects the user to mailbox that's the main role of CAS now let's see what other settings do we have in CAS. So 
let's jump on to our server so in CAS there are basically under organization there are only two policies one policy for OWA second policy for active sync and whatever you changes you make here on this level it will affect your all CASs let's say you have a big organization and you have 20 or 40 CAS says in so you should have you have CAS in each series the best practices wherever you have a physical site mailbox server role you must have one hub one CAS for them that's the best practice so if you have a large company you will have many cases in that environment so once you make any changes here this will affect all cases whereas under server whatever server is selected these policies are just for this server cache and if you on this server if you select these policies only affect this server so that's the main difference between organization cache and cache under server now let's see OWA policy. What is OWA? OWA is a uh, uh, Outlook Web Access, which is this client. Whereas this is on client. This is I'm using Outlook. This is a complete Office, one of the Office MS Office product. This is a separate client. Whereas, whereas this is if I open through Internet Explorer, and then if I go here and try to open Outlook. So let's say I'll say here HTTPS and exchange server name so my exchange server name canips dc exch01 slash 01 slash owa now this is Outlook Web Access. And Outlook Web Access connect through internet and when I go here it will ask me it will actually let me connect to the administrator account. So I'm connected to administrator account. Now this is OWA, this is complete Outlook. Same thing what you see here. So so the main uh, uh, purpose of both of them is to connect to user's mailbox. So here, if I go back to the server under this, this is <coughs> what is shown here. This is OWA settings. Now in OWA settings, you can see that it is here in segmentation. It's just saying that which feature do you want to sh you want to allow using OWA for the clients. So as soon as the client over, do they are you allowing them to see the address list? So here I'm, I'm gonna say allow. Or do you want to allow them to see calendar? So I'm gonna say allow. Or do you want them to see contacts? So allow or disallow. So here these are all that. Would you allow them to change the password? So you would allow them or disallow them. Now this is segmentation. Uh, this is when the user is connected to a public computer and using OVA, these settings will be applied. When users are using private computer and connecting to OVA, then these settings will be applied. Basically, this is just saying here that if user is connected now, let me show you this here. If I log off, if I log off, actually I need to do a little tweak here. You don't have to do this. Actually, I did that during my testing. Uh, I'm gonna change this to default so that I'll be able to show you the form base authentication now let's open this one more time so let's open our Internet Explorer open OWA and in OWA I'll open so I don't want to go through this authentication actually uh, I wanted to go through this is oh on this server actually I need to go to properties you don't have to do this this I just changed by default is form based authentication I'm gonna go through this in a moment but let me show you since we are here on this CAS and I have two types of settings So we are right here and we're checking this policy. This policy we're checking public folder and private folder. Now I wanted to show you where do you see these settings. So when the user logs into OVA, 
so when the user logs into OVA here let me open again uh, let's connect to OVA see if it opens here or let me go here open it from this okay, authentication method still not changed my second server yes here <coughs> so when you log into OVA and any user so this is the first page they're gonna say if they are using form based authentication so it is here they're saying okay are you sitting on a public computer or are you sitting in a private computer public means if the user is sitting in some net cafe maybe some library, maybe Tim Hortons or somewhere and they're trying to access OVA from some other computer then you would select this option. When you select this option Exchange gives you some restrictions because you're sitting on a public computer and public computer might have viruses so you should be you, sh you will be opening your mailbox with some restriction but if you're saying it's a private computer our computer simply means that this is my computer I trust this computer so it should be open with normal permissions so let me see if I can log in so here I'm not able to log in because I'm already logged in here close and go back here let's log in Now in your case you might not be looking at this type of authentication because I changed that. Should be looking at form based authentication. So basically you get the point that this policy here, this is for OVA peep OVA clients or the users who are connected through this. Now what is in this policy? If the user select public in that checkbox, user will be a given a they can they can do these. They can open they can open files of these types and here if I if they so what is blocked these file types will be blocked when they are configured so if these files are as an attachment in their email they won't be able to open this so this is the, these are few settings normally most of the time I'll keep them default and same goes for computers same settings but with more file options so this is CAS under uh, an organization. Now here you have active sync policy. This policy will apply to smartphones from where people are connected to uh, to their mailboxes through smartphones. Now here if you apply this policy for now this is not uh, uh, this is not by default it's not having any destructive settings uh, so this policy will be applied to all the active sync devices for example from this policy you can say you don't want to allow camera you don't want to allow Wi-Fi you don't want to allow these so you can you can have this policy here uh, in setting settings uh, in sync settings it is right here they should be allowed to do auto direct push they should be allowed to see HTML formatted email and you can also specify that now they should need a special password if you don't they will be only automatically authenticated based on their active directory credentials so if you need an extra pin for them you can you can do this here so basically these this is for active sync now so we don't make any changes on this level we'll just leave it as is and then we'll jump on to client access now on the client access what we have it is divided into first of all there are servers it shows me I have two CAS servers here so although I have 
three servers but since this one is only mailbox I don't see it here um, so I have two CAS servers here so this is CAS if I go to mailbox then I see all three of them because this second server has mailbox server role so if I select CAS I can see only two because this is only showing me CAS server roles so CAS is two now both have exactly the same type of settings but then if you make changes selecting one server it won't affect the other server so that's the difference between being under organization or under server so let's go to first one which is OWA OWA how OWA should be opened how what policies should be applied on them and and all that so this all comes here Okay. Okay, so here Outlook Web Access policy is this. This will be applied to only this server. What do we have here? So first of all, this is my Outlook link. This link will be given to all users. Most of the time this link will be uh, will be uh, will be a very simple link for now. By default it is just pointing to its own server. Now later on within the same video I'm gonna show you how to make this link very simple so that so that user doesn't have to remember your exchange server name. They should go with some logical name like webmail. So we're going to change this in a moment. But here uh, I have authentication. What type of authentication should they get when they open this page? And segmentation is the same option. What features should they be seeing while, uh, while they are in OWA? And then if they are on a public computer, what type of restrictions will be there? If they are on private computer, what type of restriction will be there? Remote files should be able, should they be able to connect to file servers in your organizations? The setting is here. Now, in over the most important thing is that what type of link you should give them. If you take this link, copy, put it in your, uh, put it in your Internet Explorer. What happens is it will open directly. It will, it will open a client. So here, I just copied that link. paste it here and here it is trying to connect to OVA it is connecting to OVA so it's asking me this authentication method so it connects to OVA now let's make this link more uh, uh, simpler just like in all organization in order to make this simpler we're gonna call this link as as a webmail instead of this we're gonna call it webmail webmail dot uh, dot bri in order to make it webmail all we need to do we need to go into administrative tools we need to go into dns and within dns we need to create a c name so we need to go into our dns server under forward lookup zone under canops.pri here I'm gonna say I create a C name and this C name will be pointing to our exchange server first exchange server which is the CAS role which is this one so this one and the name will be webmail so webmail and so webmail anybody who says webmail tries to connect to webmail basically will be connecting to this server now this is to make simpler so that all your users in your organization doesn't have to remember your exchange server name all they need to know is webmail they will connect to webmail.canvas.pri slash ova and they are connected to your client so this is what we need to do now in order to do this we're gonna do this uh, do the same thing on the other server but on the, for the other server 
what we'll do is we'll go back to DNS here we'll go back to DNS within DNS here we're gonna go create another C name and we're gonna go here forward lookup zone domain and we are going to point our other DNS server here as well so this is my third second server I'm also gonna call this webmail now this will kind of basically load balance as well so here now I have two servers with the same name so I have server number one server number two what happened why didn't it create it the C name this name would you like to remove the previous record with the name and replace this one okay how about oh I can create only similar names with different IP address not a C name so for the other server we need to create a e record so let's create a record so we can create you have only one C name as similar name so this is if you have one server in your organization pointing to this let's say I want to have the same name for this IP address exchange so that I can and now let me let me show you what I'm trying to do here now what I'm trying to do here is uh, I'm trying to have a simple name for the for OVA otherwise if you don't make it simpler then you'll have to uh, then you'll have to kind of uh, educate your end users to to learn how to connect to OVA by using the exchange server name so in all of the environment we make it simpler by having a simple name as webmail or maybe mail uh, email so or maybe web.canips.pri so here I already redirected this name for this but here just redirection shouldn't work what we need to do is we need to basically create C names or if we have two exchange server in that case I need to create a a host record I'm gonna create a a host record for first of all webmail and I'm gonna point it to my first server so my first server is 100.10 which is actually the first server and then I'm gonna point my third server so my third server is 100.30 so third server same webmail we're gonna say 100.130 create now here as you can see I can create two similar name with two different IP address but I cannot create two similar names as a C name now once they are populated in this organization let's make sure they are populated so let's ping webmail okay hold on it's wrong name so it's pinging now and all I need to do here saying webmail <coughs> and done now when the next time the user connects they don't need to remember the exchange server name all they need to do is <coughs> all they need to do is HTTPS and webmail dot canf dot pri or domain name slash owa so it connects them to it connects them to your OVA so basically our authentication is working now again remember it was asking us that small screen it took a while and now I can say this is my private computer and I need to connect with my account which is mali so I'm gonna say canip slash mali 
and username <coughs> is this. If everything is fine, it will let me connect to Canips, uh, CAS. Let's try that on the second server with the same name, not with the exchange name. Now one more thing we need to do, we need to make this change to all CAS servers. So we just made this change to this one. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go under this, double click on this. So we just changed it for this, we never changed it for the second server. So I'm gonna make it make a change for the second server, it's just being slow. So webmail dot channels dot over apply okay and at the same time let's try this. Webmail dot pri clear over so it connects to our webmail server so guys this is how we do make a change from a simple uh, from exchange server name to a simple name so that users can connect so I would suggest you doing the same thing in your exchange environment create two a host record pointing to your CAS servers and then within this change this name. Guys the second thing here is second thing here is within CAS is ECP. Now ECP is an exchange control panel. It is also a link. It's an it's a tool for this is added to Exchange 2010. It was not available in Exchange 2007. Now this tool is used for users to make basic changes to their profile. Now in order to connect to this tool all they need to do is they need to connect to this link. What's happening here? Let me see my why my computer is slow. Okay I have so many machines machines on and 15 GB is used so that's why it's kind of slow. It's fine. Uh, can go here so I just double click I went here double clicked on this so I'm here and I'm here and here so this is ECP in ECP there is not much settings let me show you what ECP is I just select and copy the link and you go into Internet Explorer and right beside this open another tab and right here you would collect connect to ECP now the only difference is same server name with ECP at the end that was OWA OWA this is ECP ECP stands for exchange control panel now in here once the user connect user will be able to do some changes to his profile and can see his profile whereas OWA is used to access email ECP while it is loading uh, let's go on to our client side and run this. So this is just actually over. Let's connect to ECP. When you connect to ECP, it will again authenticate you. So here it is try still trying to connect. it is connecting so basically when ECP is open it will show you so let me try to open ECP here on the server or what I can do is I can try and connect to the other server because ECP is available on both CH02 on 2 it's not there or maybe I'm typing the wrong server name oh it's 3 okay 
So I can go to the... Actually, this server is very, very busy at the moment for some reason. Uh, yes, it's 100% used. And why is it 100% used? Because I guess it is because actually the the host machine is under so that's why everything is slow guys what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this video here um, actually I wanted to reach to a milestone before I can so so what I can do I can stop the video here so in this video what we did we just explored CAS server on organization level we explored CAS and we did some minor changes to OWA and in the next video I'm gonna go through which will be part 2 for CAS go through ECP and exchange active sync and pop three accounts so they they need some time so i'm going to create a separate video for this so guys thank you for watching this video i'm going to see you in the next video